Hi, and welcome to this simple analysis of DSV. So what is actually DSV? DSV is a logistics company, mainly from Denmark, and they're quite big. So what I mean with quite big is that they're more or less the second biggest transportation or logistics company in the world. And they're working with segments like air, sea and road. And uh, they're focusing a little bit uh, everywhere, like they're spread, uh, spread out. So they're doing air, sea, road. You can also see a little bit of uh, railroad and career work here. This creates a unique symbiosis and integration to their systems. So a customer can send the entire package and it go goes through the, the same system all the way. This is a very huge benefit. One of their biggest assets though, or where they have shown to be really good, is in mergers and acquisitions. And they have been able to improve their margins, they have been able to do really well with their current setup and how they're working with mergers and acquisitions. And I would recommend taking a deeper look into this if you're interested in DSV. Short though, their last acquisition was Agile Gill, which is uh, transportation over air. I would also like to mention that uh, right now DSV is having over 75,000 employees, so they're quite big and it's spread all over. Over the globe. So how was 2022 for DSV? Well, you can see that it could probably have gone better, like they have fallen a little bit in value. Though honestly, they did manage to increase their outlook during the time. So in Q3, they said it's like, okay, we think that we will do better than what we said we would earlier to th this year, which is kind of good in the current market situation. Their agility gel is doing quite well. Their investment from 2021, they have provided them with a deeper exposure towards retail and health markets. Basically, it creates a little bit of safety during the current market, perhaps. If you look a little bit deeper into the current finances of uh, what agility gel adds, it seems like it has, well, not necessarily saved, but it has certainly helped their air company uh, finances quite a lot. Another thing is that at the end of the year, uh, Deutsche Bahn came out and said, hey, we are willing to sell DB Schenker and, well, DSV might be slightly interested in that. If they get DB Schenker, DSV might roll up and become the biggest third-party logistic company in the world. A lot of analysts are actually mentioning that DSV is uh, the most likely buyer in this case. And since I'm checking this at the end of the year, uh, just after the Q4 report, I can say that they actually managed to do what they uh, expected with increased outlook. It reached over 25,000 with the EBIT, which was what they said between 24,500 to 25,005. They reached 25,300. So they were in the, uh, in the upper area in what they said that they would manage. So good job for the DSV. So going into the nitty gritty here with a statement and finances. Honestly, I think that they have had a really good growth. Uh, I'm very happy uh, with how well they have done. Like you can see here with the revenue uh, from 2014 to 2022 is quite a lot. Uh, the same is with the EBIT and margin. It's like the margin they have been able to improve, the EBIT they have been able to improve. I'm, I'm just actually kind of baffled by the great results that they are showing. You can see the results have improved with over 10 times. They have a low dividend though, so if you're a dividend investor, don't go in there and expect gold being thrown off for you, because you will probably get like 0.5 to 0.8% of the current evaluation, so not too much to brag about in that area. Though they have managed to improve their EPS, and that is quite a lot. So honestly, when it comes to the statement, I'm actually quite happy. And when it comes to the balance, you can see that they have an acceptable debt. Honestly, it's been growing a little bit extra. I, I don't really like the increase, but if you compare this um, debt increase and then it's like the growth that it has had, and then compare it also to the interest bearing debt that you can see here, of course, together with um, EBIT, it's actually not that bad. So for now, I'm letting it go. Uh, they do have a good current assets versus current liabilities ratio, which means that they're less likely to have any issues with uh, liquidity. And I would also like to mention that they actually do have a low debt to equity. So this indicates that they should have good uh, control over their asset compared to their debt. So in general, honestly, it looks like a healthy balance. And it's not often I'm talking this positive or finding so much positive about financial situation. Like the only thing I, I don't really like is the growth that we can see. But uh, Honestly, with the earnings that they have improved, yeah, as long as they can keep uh, the earnings up, it looks good. And then if we go into the cash flow, we can actually see that they have managed to increase their cash flow quite a lot as well. Like from 2000 to 26,000 is quite the jump, I would say. Um, they do though have those low dividends that I did mention. Like it doesn't take a lot of the pie. You can see here around 5%, right? Though they try to stay around 10%, so perhaps the dividend will actually be a little bit higher this year, perhaps even close to 1%. 
uh, they do have a very high share back amount. So this is something that you will notice is like in the if you go into the cash flow in their finances this year, 20,000 is used for share buyback. So it's a lot of money going into buying back these shares. They do also have fairly low investments, so this can help you understand how they get a lot of the companies. Basically, they go out there and they consolidate with other companies. They draw them back, like they draw them in into their stock, and then they buy back the stocks after they have done that. I would say that they have a fairly good cash flow control. It's one thing I don't like, and I would kick on this on every company if I see it. Picking up debt around the same level, for example, as the dividend. I don't like it. If you pay dividend, I, I like that. I like I'm a dividend investor, but I don't want to see you take out debt at the same levels as the dividend. But here, I would say that they should either have a little bit less buy uh, share buyback and rather pay back some of their debt than to actually take up uh, a little bit of loans. Like they have done it this uh, in 2022, and that disappointed me a little bit. And when it comes to the downside, I would say that they are quite exposed to energy. Like this is a transportation or logistic company and oil, diesel, those kind of things are quite important to them for now. If they're not having that, it's most likely just connected to electricity, which it seems like they are willing to invest in going forward. And with the current prices, of course, that is a downside. So the question here is, will they be able to move it forward to the customer? And will they then be able to have the same prices as other competitors? Their dividends are quite low, around 10 to 15 percent of their results. It should be mentioned that in 2023 it is uh, even lower, it's around 8% of it, and it is uh, due to them expecting the result to go down a little bit. Uh, they are in a cyclical segment, so they have a shipping segment or freight segment, so it's something to notice. It might be uh, a little bit more ups and downs, but honestly it has done really well during crisis or bad situations and they seem to be doing okay. New competitors are coming in. This is mentioned in their yearly report that you have more digital competitors. They are of course lacking a little bit in the logistic uh, segment. They don't have a lot of that part themselves but uh, it is creating a little bit more pressure and also some of their uh, the shipping companies are starting to create delivery more close to uh, delivery on land as well. So it is two areas where competition is actually rising up a a little bit. So that is something to think about. DSV did mention that they feel quite confident about handling this, but they did mention it and it should be something that you're considering. When it comes to the 5th of February, uh, we are going to ban Russian petroleum products like diesel, those kind of things. And it looks like this can uh, create a little bit of uh, insecurity when it comes to uh, fuel prices, for example. So it's just something that you should uh, have into the consideration. Like, of course, we will get the fuel from other places, but it's still what will actually happen to the price. Uh, will it be bottlenecks are happening and those kind of things. So I put this as a clear downside for DSV. And what about the benefits? Well, the benefits about DSV is that they do have a good growth. I would say they have baffled me uh, when I'm looking at their statement. It looks really good. Uh, of course, it seems like COVID have helped them quite a lot. But yeah, it looks good. Uh, they have really been able to grow. Their dividend have more than doubled. And uh, they have bought back a lot of the stocks. So yeah, they're what you can call shareholder friendly as well. I'm actually quite positive to this. They also have good finances. So we went through the cash flow, the state the um, balance and honestly like the only thing that I can kick on is that they have gained a little bit extra debt and perhaps the cost will increase in the future. Honestly I'm positive to the finances and they're good at M&A. They take in uh, new companies, they integrate it and they uh, use it as a whole package from road to sea and air. Uh, they've been doing really well and Jill, that was a recent acquisition, have actually been finished in one year. They say that they have integrated it already. It's a new record for them. Uh, I'm kind of baffled. They're also globally exposed so they are sending goods basically everywhere and uh, getting goods from everywhere and transporting it so it gives you like a little bit of that uh, global exposure at least for uh, if you're a Norwegian shareholder and um, this might be interesting and just to mention the integrations their symbiosis they get so much data uh, one of their examples from their yearly report was that they had several warehouses all of them they're collecting data on they're comparing how this warehouse is working compared to this and to find out which place is more efficient basically they have a lot of data they are connected to each other and they can create customers a whole experience. So these are strong benefits, I would say, for uh, DSV. 
So where is DSV going forward? Well, their EBIT in 2023 is not looking too good. The earnings or EBIT that you had in 2021 will be very similar to the EBIT in 2023. So they're going back a little bit. Well, uh, they're going back substantially, actually. So a lot of the price that is already in this stock is actually more expensive than it seems. Like the current evaluation is around 15, 16 price earnings. That price earnings will fall substantially. So you might actually look at a 20 to 25 price earnings uh, next year if it is at the current evaluation and then if you're also a Norwegian or Swedish investor you also have like the 20% premium extra price for the company so this is uh, something that you should consider a little bit and another thing that I would like to mention is that DB Schenker is for sale right so uh, Deutsche Bahn put it out for sale in December and all the analytics are having DSV as the favorite so it looks like DSV might be the one going to catch it and when it comes to the EBIT like this is uh, something I read from their yearly report right and here they're writing that oh well this is what we expect unless we get a bigger acquisition this year so it they might be indicating that they're going for it quite hard so yeah just something to think about there Another thing that if they actually do get DB Schenker in, they will actually be having the biggest pie of the market, right? It's like they will go up to be the first place third party logistic company in the world. That is kind of cool. And another thing that I would like to mention, the change in margin. Currently, the margin in DSV have increased substantially the last few years. Uh, DNB is saying this is have happened because of COVID and it started in that area. So it sounds uh, fair enough. In their analysis, they are saying that they, they do not expect them to fall down to the lower levels before that, but still like it is expected that their margin will fall. So DSV going forward, you're actually looking at the EBIT that is going down and then the margin is going down under there again. It might be a little bit more difficult going forward than what is expected. So, for the disclaimer, this is not financial advice for anyone to buy or sell DSV. I do hope that I have uh, taught you a little bit about what the company is about and uh, given you some ideas about some of the weaknesses, some of the strengths. And uh, yeah, other than that, cheers!